there are quite a few examples, I think, of companies that some people may know well where the leadership was told what they wanted to hear. Uh, and perhaps we're hearing things that, uh, or not hearing things that they should have. How did you make sure that you sort of were really connected, uh, for lack of a better term, to, uh, to what was going on in the organization and to making sure that you were getting both, you know, the good news, but also even more importantly, I would think the bad news. I am sure that there are a line of people who would say I was turned up. I am sure of that. And so um, I, I don't have any, any uh, view that somehow we were better listeners than others. But here's what I would say is that we had, um, we had a process where we empowered different parts of our organization to be completely independent. And I made sure that those parts of the organizations um, were constantly giving us information. So let's, let's, let's take for example, we had a very independent board of directors, very independent. Um, and I'll take simple things. If we didn't send them out the materials in advance, they would call me up and go, this is not acceptable. If they didn't like the, the depth of the material, they would complain. And they were good that way. Now, they didn't know all the questions to ask, but they knew a lot of questions. We had a completely independent financial organization. Now, a lot of companies, you know, the financial organization also runs strategy, or maybe they run real estate, or maybe they run services. We had a pure financial organization. All they did is do the numbers. So their only job was to tell me bad news. Because nobody in a finance organization likes to tell you good news. It's not their job. They want to tell you the bad news. So we always had the bad news on the table. Our legal department, completely separate, independent, didn't have any other functions associated with that other than being the cop in the business. Then we had, over time, we developed consumer-oriented groups. So David, I think I'd like to think we built a system of connections and information that sooner or later some bad news would surface quicker than if people were trying to cover it up. Now, um, I worked um, on, I was on a board, um, I use his name because I love him, Larry Bossidy. Larry Bossidy was the CEO of Allied Signal. Um, and he once told me, he said, I don't your only job is to find bad news. That's what he told me. And there's some of you in here, I've used that. So I used to go around the company, no matter how good things were, I would say, what's wrong? Okay, and I expected my senior team to do the same. So David, you have to build a reflex. It's much like the media. You know, um, Norman Perlstein once said to me during an interview, he was questioning me, and I said to him, Norman, what are you doing? Why are all these questions? He said, I am looking for the information you're not telling. I never forgot that. That was a long time ago. That's what a CEO needs to do. And the C CEO senior team needs to do. Now, there are plenty of examples out there now where you look around and you say, who was telling the CEO what? I don't want to point fingers, but there's plenty of companies like that that you really get nervous well, I, about. I, I worked for one for a long time where there's a lot of people wondering what was going on. Yeah. Um, GE, of course, is what I'm talking about, and you know it comes to mind because an iconic company that has fallen dramatically uh, in terms of reputation and everything else, and you do want them uh, because there are skills and leadership that I can think about, and Jeff Mo, that he was extraordinarily good at. But I find myself as a reporter, frankly, and I think a lot of other people in that particular case, wondering, well, what what did we miss? What did he miss? And what happened over the 15 plus years? He had, his tenure was roughly as long as yours was. Yeah, I don't want to say anything controversial, but I will say one point on that. So I was on Bossidy's board for a long time, and one of the tenets that came from GE and IBM over many years was that you could rotate senior executives every two or three years because their skills were transferable to other things. So they built a culture around saying, I'm going to take you, Don, and we're going to transfer you to some other function that you have nothing, no knowledge about, but because you're a great manager, you're going to be able to do it. We never did that in our company. Some people were generalists, but if you're a technologist, you're going to build a career in technology. If you're a marketing person, you're going to build a career in marketing. And I think the depth was missing in some of these companies because they don't have the reflexes to know what they don't know. 
And so if you're in an aerospace company, I don't want some HR person running an aerospace business. Okay, I, I just, I, I want an aerospace person running an aerospace business. And so in the old days, that would be looked at as I was a Luddite. But I, I think now that we look back, you want professionals being able to do that, and people who have that. And you need a mix, but I think if there's one point of departure with that old way of thinking, is that management's not fungible. Not when it comes to this world, this level of complexity, and this level of competition. Right. right. Well, there was this need to sort of have people believe in the, in the conglomerate theme, and the idea that one area could benefit another, and, and actually... Yeah, let me get, let me get a comment. Daniel over here is the, the chief technology guy over at New York Presbyterian. For years, they would have doctors run their IT system, or they have some retread from finance run their... IT systems, good people, but they didn't know. Then they bring in a professional, and now they're gonna spend a lot of money to revamp their entire IT system. And when you ask him a question, he knows 16 answers before you even get finished. It gives you much more comfort, to, to your point, that the senior managers will be in a good position to know that. And you know, this is what NYSEI does. NYSEI helps people understand the depth of science, so people can ask a lot of questions and they can be curious and keep working on things to create the depth that's needed. You know the Chinese do this, you know the Koreans do this, you know the Japanese do this. So the people we're competing with aren't generalists. They are very special, specialized in the fields they have. And so we're dealing with a completely different level of, so I think our management approach has to 